Hi guys and girls on YouTube, welcome to my channel. In this little video, we're going to be taking another trip down memory lane. Uh, this is another TV set, a vintage TV, that I've acquired off a friend of mine. So uh, let's pick up the camera and turn it round. So, I've got it well under wraps there. Um, I'll give you a clue. It's a thorn and it's from 1977 approximately. So let's just lift the cover and have a quick look. And there we go, it's the Thorn 8800 chassis and it's um, a Ferguson model 3738. Um, it's obviously got um, ultrasonic remote control but I don't have the remote for it but there's always a possibility I might come hold of one um, because my friend's probably got the remote, he just doesn't know where it is, it's like he's a bit like me. Um, it's touch tune and uh, if we take a look round there you can see the fablons just starting to peel off because it's actually kept in his cellar so let's turn it around and have a quick look at the back first right so that's the back view uh, it's obviously very dirty because it, it says it's been standing at least 25 years if not even more uh, we'll take a look there the model plate Ferguson 3738 uh, if we move down there, that's the um, camera's going to have to focus now. That's the um, I think it's a two amp um, cutout. Um, if we move round here, there's actually a sticker on the side, and it says um, "Aerial Installation by Pennine Aerials." So that possibly has been on it since it was new. Now my friend says this was working when it was laid up. Uh, but obviously after 25 years there's bound to be something wrong with it now and uh, I've noticed on the top there's a little sticker there and it says on it well I don't know if you can see on the camera um, let's just have a look it says on it A51 120X so that's the tube um, it says that's been replaced the EHT tray and the line output transformer uh, I think it says replace, I hope it doesn't say removed hmm anyway so what we'll do now is we'll just pop the camera down and we'll take the back off and have a look inside right well that's interesting I've got the back off and uh, there's a, a little diagram there for setting up the convergence and uh, also there's a layout of the panels there uh, but more importantly there's a sticker there um, that tends to suggest this might have been on rental um, at Rumbelows at some time. In fact, it's dated there, 1st of the 7th, 1983. Now you can see it better now, and it's got uh, engineer's signature, E. Shenton. So somebody who uh, is watching YouTube might have worked for Rumbelows. Might, uh, might, you might be watching your own name on YouTube. Um, anyway... Let's uh, have a quick look inside the TV. I've spotted another very unusual thing. Um, now, I can't, because it's such a long time, it must be the, the mid-1980s, last time I repaired one of these, um, and they were getting a bit old-fashioned then. Um, I don't remember these being fitted with a Toshiba tube. Um, and I did say on the sticker on the top, um, it tends to suggest the tube's been replaced. Um, but if we move to the other side, it does appear to carry the correct um, Thorn logo for the tube. So, I'm not really sure what's going on there. Um, I've also checked down there the line output transformer. Uh, you can see it has been replaced, obviously with a second hand one, because you can tell by the soldering uh, and the transformer's all dirty. Um, but let's, uh, let's have a quick look around. That's the time base panel, uh, focus control, tube base, uh, that's some of the convergence settings on the delta gun and uh, there's another convergence panel up there which I'm presuming actually swings out so you can look at it from the front. Um, now one thing, the only thing I do remember about these sets is on here um, there used to be a tantalum capacitor somewhere in the middle. Um, 
I think it was that one and I think it was C171 but I remember a red one um, and it was connected across the 25 volt rail and it used to short out the 25 volt rail but I can't remember what it's actually caused but that appears to have a blue one in um, let's have a look around here that's the degaussing at the top that's the power supply and um, sound output which I think that's an MJE 340 by memory um, that's a VA VA1104 they used to have trouble um, in fact I've still got one of these in stock a brand new one uh, I must go and look it out because um, I think there was a problem with these I think they used to vibrate or make a humming noise and and Thorne came up with a modification one that was all he potted in uh, resin now interestingly enough there's another sticker down there um, I can't get the camera in so I'm gonna to have to try and pull that out let's just stop the camera and have a look right so that's the sticker out of the set um, that's dated 8 1983 which is only about a month later than the date on the one in the back um, and it's also signed by a different engineer it could be W Dunscombe um, and it says Rumbelow's Ordenshaw um, now this guy I got it from he did originally come from somewhere down Manchester so I wonder if this is an ex rental um, and they actually got rid of it because it, it kept going wrong uh, too often um, it certainly looks like it's been repaired um, within a month now I've already climatized this set and by climatizing it I mean I left it in the back of the car for a few days during the heat wave um, so I'm not going to warm it up with a hairdryer um, we're just going to reform the cap and uh, plug it straight back in right so I've just had a look through my old stock from the 1980s and I think I've found the part uh, we're looking for now interestingly enough that's an EHT tray and um, I think that's from my old shop I think that's probably from a thorn 8,000, 8,500 uh, but the part we're interested in is this here so let's take it where there's a bit more light right so that's the part I was telling you about this dirty old bag now I've just got it out and if we look down there that's the mains input choke uh, with the um, surge limiter on um, now I seem to remember a technical bulletin where these were buzzing and uh, people complaining and Thorn came up with a replacement item now this appears to be the same sort of thing but it's all fully encased in epoxy resin um, and I think, I'm sure I've seen it in Ferguson feedback but that was the, um, that was the recommended uh, replacement part to get rid of this buzzing noise and it looks like they've just taken that and uh, filled, it full of, filled it full of epoxy resin so right, let's, um, let's get this set switched on see what happens Right, now I can't just find the service manual for the 8800, um, but in reality I can't actually remember if there was a service manual for the 8800. I know it was based on the 8500, um, so maybe you used the um, 8500 service manual and um, it just had a few different modifications on. I honestly can't remember, it's such a long time ago. Well, that's the service manual for the 8500 and I've got some information here for the 8800 series along with um, lots of technical bulletins and things um, what's the year on that 1976 1977 and um, I presume Oh yeah, that's the um, ultrasonic remote control operation for the 8800. Now another interesting thing, while we just wait for the capacitors to uh, reform, is I'm looking in the back and I'm thinking, what's that? Two bits of card glued on there. It's a bit of a mess. But then when I turn to the other side of the case, now it all becomes clear. Um, this would have been where a slot meter was fitted. Um, where you put um, 
I don't know, was it 50p or 10p? I've no idea, I can't remember. But you, you put some meter in it and you turn a, a knob and that would give you so many hours of viewing um, on your TV. So yeah, this was almost certainly out on rental uh, at one time in its life. Right, so that's the cap reformed. Um, just before we switch it on, I've just noticed another interesting thing. Um, the EHT tray that I had, that I thought was for a Thorn 8000, 8500 um, it actually appears to be uh, the correct one for this set so that's another thing I've forgotten about I thought the one I had was for the Thorn 8000 but now I'm thinking the Thorn 8000 EHT tray was a lot smaller than that um, anyway we're all reformed I'll just screw this back in and then um, well we'll just power it up and see what happens I think the best thing to do can't do any more damage it's been standing in the cellar for the last 25 years right so just one very last thing of interest before we turn this set on um, when I was a kid and I used to go to the tip on my bike and bring stuff back um, a long long time ago in the 1970s um, I went one day and I found lots and lots of sheets of copper clad circuit board um, and I brought all this back, all this copper clad board. It was all brand new, but it'd been thrown away for some reason. I brought all this back. And in them days, as a small boy, I was always making things out of magazines like Practical Electronics, Practical Wireless. Um, and I brought all this circuit board back. And I've just had a look through my archive and I pulled out some bits what I used to make things with. And this is the board in question. And uh, that's, that's a board... I made for a power supply there look 1981 um, now what's unusual about this board and I've still got pieces of it because it was in big sheets I used to cut up it's all marked BXL the whole lot was marked BXL um, now if we turn over to this TV it appears to be the same copper clad that Thorne used for making the TVs um, let's just move that there Let's get the light in there. It's upside down, of course, but can you see the words BXL on the board? So if I pull this into the camera, we don't block the light. You see it there. So this is without doubt the exact same circuit board I found on the tip um, is what they used to make these Thorn TVs with so I really don't know where it came from or who dumped it and I've not BXL is not something I've heard of um, it's not a manufacturer I've heard of let's see if we can just turn the camera upside down no that didn't do anything did it yeah so whether it's to come for some some factory that was producing these circuit boards locally i really don't know but uh, anyway let's stop now and let's get this set switched on and see what happens right here we go it's plugged in it's switched on at the socket let's hit the button on the front and nothing's happened No, I'm not hearing anything. That's just... Well, something happened there, didn't it? And uh, as you can see, a whole smoke pouring out the back. Right, well that didn't go too well, did it? Um, obviously, needs a bit more uh, further investigation, this. Right, with a bit more light now, I can see what's happened. Uh, the cap across the main switch has just exploded. Yeah, so um, I'll probably just cut that out then and try again. Right, well that's the cap out. Um, as you can see it's totally exploded. Um, it'll only be the anti-mains modulation capacitor. Uh, so it should work perfectly well without that in for the minute. 
Right, so it's plugged in now, it's switched on, I've snipped that cap out. Um, as you can see, there's no sign of any display in there. Um, but the CRT heaters are lit, so they must come from a separate transformer, probably down there. But I'm going to have to do some work on this now, because uh, there's obviously a fault on the power supply. Right, so I've got all the details of the power supply here uh, in the scope day to day from 1978. Um, yeah, 8800 modified power supply diagram. Um, that's all I really need to uh, take a look at this set. So we're going to stop the camera and come back to this uh, later. Right, well I found why the power supply is not running, there's not enough voltage at the anode of the thyristor here. Now that diode's actually alright and I moved down here um, and there appears to be a dry joint there on 9.2 a plug and a socket. So I'll just see if I can zoom in on the camera and show you that. Uh, in fact when I look at this board, these dry joints all over the place, it really does need um, a lot of work on this board. Um, but the bit that's preventing it from coming on, um, can you see that dry joint there and that plug and socket? Um, so not just that, it needs um, a lot of work doing on this board. In fact it looks like it's already had a lot of soldering but I can see dry joints everywhere. Um, in fact, you can see by how, how black the board is, how hot these run. Um, I remember in this day, that resistor was always getting dry jointed there. In fact, it's uh, it's been fixed, but it's, it's wobbling about. So, yeah, it does require an awful lot of work, uh, this set. Right, so with that attended to, it's still not running. Um, now, I've noticed that we don't have a 25 volt rail here to run the power supply uh, now the problem is uh, that 51 ohm resistor there the one that's the hottest on the board that's been uh, soldered up it's actually open circuit um, now I don't I, I might have a 51 ohm resistor it take me ages to look um, but I just want to get this some life on the tally and see if it's viable to repair um, so taking that into account, I'm just going to put 47 ohm in for the minute and uh, just see what that does. Because I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of other issues with this TV. Uh, but that's the problem. We've no 25 volt rail to uh, power the, um, the thyristor to drive. Right, okay guys and girls. So I got it wrong again. Uh, the resistor's not open circuit. I've got 45 volts here, um, and I've got no voltage there. Um, in fact, this resistor is absolutely red hot, um, so there must be a short across the um, 25 volt rail, uh, which this powers. Now I'm thinking, is that the problem I used to have um, in the 1980s with this capacitor short circuit? I remember it was this one, and I remember it was red, but I couldn't remember what fault it caused. So I'm wondering if this was the problem. Right, so there is actually a dead short across the emitter of VT702, which is there, to ground. You can see there um, a dead short. But it's not actually coming from that capacitor. Um, so we're going to have to do some unplugging now to see where it's actually coming from. Right, so I've unconnect, I've disconnected connector PL4 on the signals panel and the short's gone away. So if we move to the diagram, um, 25 volt rail there into the signals panel. The only thing that could take that rail right down to ground um, is that capacitor, which I've already checked, which is okay. Um, but if we move across here, there's another decoupling capacitor there, C140 100 mic. Now them are the only two caps that would take that rail right down to ground. So I'm going to be looking at C140 next. 
Right, so I've had a good look over this board. I can't see C140, but I would imagine it's that one there because it's 100 mic, um, 16 volt. Um, so, now this board actually swings out, but I can't remember how we get it out. It appears to be tight in. Um, I know it definitely swings out this way, but I, but... While I've been trying to figure out how it swings out, I have just noticed something. So if we come down here, you can see that the board isn't actually clipped into the plastic frame properly. Um, I think that sh board should be on the opposite side. In fact, if we go around there, you can see where the board's not clipped in. And I'm wondering now um, if we've got a short, because this board is actually touching on this metal frame that should be clipped right into there so I'm going to have to figure out see it should look like that and then if we come down it's more and more unclipped um, I'm going to have to try and figure out because I can't remember uh, there must be a catch somewhere to uh, swing that out Right, so I've got it wrong again. That is not the cap I've been looking on the board. And also, the prime suspect there, C171. If we move over to here, I thought it was that one there, but that's not C171, it's C173. So, the C171, that there is the suspect. And I'm going to be taking that out now and trying it. Right, so it's not that one, so we've still got to continue to search for that one, C140, because the short's still there with that removed. Right, so I found C140, it's not that either, I've taken them both out and the short's still there, but what I hadn't noticed before, which I've noticed now, the 25 volt rail actually goes straight into a chip there, so we could have a chip down, so we're going to have to spend some more time do some more investigation but we're making progress i think slowly and with lots of mistakes right so the stupid thing is if i'd used the milliohm meters to start with i could have found this in a few seconds rather than trying to make assumptions and been really clever reading the circuit diagram um, but it turns out and it's not actually shown on the diagram uh, the part that's faulty so here we've got ic3 uh, and pin 9 is a 25 volt supply um, now i've unplugged that chip because they're on they're in ic socket so it's not that but the short's coming from here but on my board i've got um, a tantalum capacitor connected between pin 9 and ground which is not actually shown on this diagram and it is um it's that one there, C203, which is dead short. So let's just whip it out, and then I'll put them other caps back in. Right, so that's the offending cap out. Right, I've just clipped on it with some crocodile clips. As you can see, dead short. So I'll remove the cap, short goes away. Right, so that's the problem. So let's just get another one in there. And then uh, we'll switch on again, see what happens. Right, so that's interesting. C203, uh, which decouples pin 9 of IC3. That's pin 9 of IC3. Uh, one microfarad, 35 volt, not actually shown on this diagram. Um, and this is, according to the front, Turn it over. Uh, the correct one for the 8800 series. So um, the only thing I can think of is there must be uh, different variations of this particular panel. Right. Well, as I guess you'd expected, it's still not come on. Uh, there's a bit more life than it did before. If I press the button. Um, you can actually hear a rumbling noise out of the speaker and I'm not too sure if I can't smell something burning. So I think I'm going to wrap this up for the day 
um, because I've got other things to do and we'll come back to this another day right so we're back onto this job now uh, while we wait for the post because uh, I can't do anything else till the postman arrives now interestingly enough this cap here um, which is it C171 6.8 mic when I took that out first it was actually okay uh, but since he's had power applied to it it suddenly turned very leaky that's um, I've just clipped on some crocodiles there and it's actually measuring about 3k um, it's turned into a, a resistor so I'm wondering now these tantalum capacitors um, if we take a quick look the whole board is sprinkled with these um, I think possibly um, if the set turns in to be a viable repair it might be a good idea see these red ones blue ones it might be just a good idea um, to swap the whole lot because obviously uh, these caps look like they could be very unreliable or um, perhaps they don't like standing for a long time and then having power reapplied to them um, so let's just see if we can get this set actually to come on first and then uh, if the tube's really good and it might be a good idea to just change the whole lot Right, so the new cap's in. I'm going to turn on here so I can stand well back. And the first thing you'll notice is the channel indicators lit up on one. And I can hear EHT rustling. That humming noise you can hear in the background, that's the isolation transformer. Um, for some reason, it doesn't seem to like this set. Yeah, well, it's on. Um, the picture's looking a bit... Uh, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. We have got snow on the screen, but it's looking a little bit dark. Uh, let's just connect this to a skybox. I'll just turn it off and connect it to a skybox while I go and look for some leads. As you can see, it was on. Right, oh, OK, so we connected it to a skybox. I've tuned it in. Uh, I've tuned it into number two on this touch tuning. and um, the picture's looking a little bit green so um, I think what we need to do now is find the um, horizontal hold and just tweak that first and then uh, I might have to test the tube before we go any further it looks very green we've got sound anyway oh well, we did have of course all these are noisy Right, so that's the time base panel down into the servicing position. Uh, now the horizontal hole actually turns out um, to be this inductor here. Uh, so we need a non-metallic uh, tool and I've got this CK set of trimming tools. I'm just going to give that a quick tweak and then we'll come back. Definitely it was. Uh, it's only that we just oh, need well, to... there we go. Uh, it's, actually, it's a lot better than what I thought. I just so we can turn this down. Is that a very cop... Yeah, well, it obviously needs cleaning. Um, but I'm very reluctant just to spray switch cleaner in here because if it's mounted on plastic, you usually find that service all attacks plastic. Um, but as you can see... Plenty of saturation. and it's flaring round here a bit so um, it could be that the tube's a little bit worn um, but I'm struggling to turn the contrast control down because these are so noisy each house is renovated the aim is to get it sold as quickly as possible uh, and also we seem to be lacking in a little bit of blue content so I think what I might do is I might just test the tube first and then see where we go from there but all in all, it's coming on. Right, so um, as you can see by the dust, it's a long time since I've used this lot. Right, so all we've got to do now is just find the correct base. 
Right, so that's the tube A56 120X. Right, so here we go. A56 120X base 7. Uh, let's see if we can find that and just hope I haven't lost it. Right, well that's a turn up for the books. This tube's absolutely perfect. In fact, it's nearly like brand new. Um, that's the emission on the red gun. We're nearly on 100%. Switch to the green gun. That's still nearly 100%. Switch to the blue gun. So that's absolutely perfect. All the guns are well balanced. Um, so we have the poor pitch. We have an electrical fault. Um, it's nothing actually wrong with the tube. And I can't see this been... Um, rejuvenated in the past because the guy I got it off doesn't have a rejuvenator so right let's um, let's switch it back on then and have a play with it see what's wrong with the colours well as you can see it's still very very green um, and we do have massive convergence errors uh, but we know that the tube is not the problem right that's looking a lot better uh, I'll show you what it was. Um, the red, green, blue drive controls here are very noisy. So I'm just going to put a little bit of switch cleaner in them first. Right, getting there now. I just need to set up the grayscale. Uh, but look at these massive convergence errors on the blue. Um, so we'll come to that in a few minutes. Right, so that's looking a whole lot better now on the grayscale. Right, so now let's take a quick look at the convergence errors. Uh, but I'm not going to spend hours setting all this up because the post just come. And um, I've got some spare parts to do some other jobs now. So uh, that's the uh, grayscale. And as you can see, we've got massive errors here. But yeah, all in all, that's looking really good. So that's grayscale. That's the colour bars. Looking really well so far. Right, now I don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera. Uh, but the main one that seems to be out is the blue tilt. Uh, because it's up there. And as you move down there, it's underneath. So, um, let's have a look at this. That's the one there. Blue tilt. Uh, the second one after the inductor so that's the convergence panel I think this should lift up um, so you can see it from the front but it seems to be a bit stiff that's the one there in fact if you look at the board how hot the board's got um, so I might just have to um, stop the camera while I adjust that Right, actually, if I'm very careful, I might be able to adjust it at the same time. So if we look where the blue is there, and we need to move that up. See, that's that's tilting down. We need to move that up. There. And that's not bad, that. That's about right there. Wow, look at that. Just needs a couple more tweaks and away we go. Right, so we're still needing a bit more work, but I'm going to wrap this up now because I've got other things to do. So let's take one final look at the picture. Fantastic, Jess. We've loved having you in the studio. Thank you oh, very thank much you indeed for your time. Me. And looking forward to tonight, of course. You'll be yeah. there with Gabby and the team. And what a squad that is, by the way. I've noticed all your Instagram posts. It's I a know. powerful squad that. <laughs> like I said earlier, just having a little bit So look at that, that guys and girls. That's the, the 1977 yeah, oh, yeah. Thorne. <laughs> so turn it down. That's the 1977 Thorn 8800 chassis. All right, many thanks for watching my video and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye. With us over on BBC Two, though, we're going to be bringing you some more lawn bowls and we'll be heading to the beach volleyball. We'll see you there very soon. Bye for now.